Isaac Savage here at Glad Rap Channel, here with heavyweight, colossal, up-and-comer, David Light. You certainly put on a performance tonight, and welcome here to the ABA. Yeah, thanks, man. Cheers. How are you feeling after that? Vai Mully, you know, we don't know too much about him. Sounds, well, looked like a bit of a journeyman, and he just did not go down. Yeah, man, he had a chin of steel. I mean, I've knocked out guys before, and I was hitting him with some of my best in a row, and he just wouldn't go down, so... We Man. had we had uh, probably one of the guys that you trained with earlier or in the past, uh, Mr. Business Shay Brock, and he said some of the punches that you'd thrown, he'd seen you drop guys at, at world champs and amateur yeah. rounds back in the day. Yeah, yeah, uh, I could feel them, especially with the pro gloves. You know, they're they're a little bit smaller, a lot tighter with the kind of hand reps we got on and. Man, I could feel it on my hands, and he was tough. That's what we were saying as well. You know, with the amateur fights, uh, obviously the guys wanting tonight, and you fought in the past. The way that you wrap your gloves uh, is, is not uh, with the tape and, and it's extensive. It's just with the hand wrap, isn't it? And then you put on maybe a 14, a 12 ounce glove. I think it's a, as far as I'm concerned, it's a 10 ounce glove. Oh, tonight yeah. though, tonight yeah. you put on the pro gloves. Yeah. And we're saying, I said to Shay, getting hit with one of those pro gloves is probably like a, a cricket ball or a baseball. Yeah, man, here. it's sharp. It's, it's really sharp. It's just, it's. it's you push all the padding with what you're wearing and on the wrap on the inside, so the padding's already compressed. Well, we were looking at them from here too, and you know, obviously Shay's got a bit of experience, me not as much, and you can just tell that the gloves look rock solid, and you know, you yes. can you can test for that as well because you were throwing at him and he, he threw, and you got a couple of scratches, yeah, but no, you're still looking pretty, yeah, you're still right, looking yeah. good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we were saying too, based on how busy you've been, you know, man, yeah. you got that win over Louis K9 Tio La yeah. two weeks ago. One week prior, we saw him lights out somebody. He yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. KO'd somebody, too, sent them yeah. to another world. So I thought after that win, he was on a bit of a high. Yeah. Obviously a hard fight coming against you, but you dropped him so quickly. I can barely see what happened. Now for those watching back home, what did you what did you drop him with? What did you stop him with? It was just a left-right combination, and uh, the right hand just connected right on his chin, just right in the sweet spot. I could feel it shake his whole head, and I knew he was going down. But yeah, I was just trying to set something up. I wasn't even meaning to drop him with that one. When you hit him on the chin, uh, and like you said, you just sound sounds like you felt felt like it hit the sweet spot. Yeah, totally. Did it? Yeah, right, right, sort of in there between when the jaw connects to the chin, it's it's a really good spot to get them. Almost similar to like say when the cricket bat and the ball meets the sweet yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. It wasn't even a big shot, but it just it hits the right place when they're not quite expecting it. He was sort of not really looking, and and yeah, it was, oh, it was amazing it was to watch. Like, yeah. And for those watching back home, I mean, I know. Um, you know, it's obviously good to talk about yourself, expose your brand, etc. Yeah. Where, whereabouts are you from and how did it all start for you? For those watching at home that don't know too much about you, are you born and bred Auckland? Yeah, so I was born in Devonport on the North Shore. And uh, yeah, my brother, he had a few fights. He started here and I just, I didn't even think about boxing until I saw him fight and I thought that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, because the whole crowd is just watching two guys and then you're alone that's the two guys against each other I thought it was awesome so how old were you when you started boxing well he, he started training me a bit when I was 8 but I only really I had my first fight when I was 15 and how old are you now I'm uh, 26 just turned 26 on Monday yeah. ok ok well, well happy birthday <laughs> yeah. happy birthday Cheers. and what a way to um, obviously start off your birthday yeah, it was yeah, a great yeah. night tonight yeah. and mate obviously you just said your brother got you into it does your brother still box and do you guys nah, what happens had, when you have an argument now he only had three fights <laughs> but I just I took it off he introduced me to his coach uh, John Mackay and yeah I, I got in with him and just so I, got, I lost my first six fights and then and then after that I started uh, and has, on has boxing taken you around the world with the amateur ranks yeah man I've been to England Finland um, I was supposed to go to the US uh, that just fell through um, unfortunately and yeah, China, Kazakhstan, oh. yeah, just everywhere, man. <laughs> so you're obviously a fan of, um, of boxing and other combat sports. Like, what are your thoughts on UFC and, and other things out there? Are you a bit of a fan of that? Yeah, yeah, massively. I mean, it all takes heart. It's all one guy in there, one guy who's, who's putting everything on the line and trained his ass off. Um, you know, there, there are differences in it. I wouldn't really ever compare the sports, but I have respect for anyone who's a fighter because it's, it's, it's a lifestyle, man. You, 
with making weight, keeping fit, True. And, True. Uh, and the training you do. And that's what yeah. we said tonight. We said, you know, for those watching back home, even though David Light fought two weeks ago, it, it's hard coming back two weeks, three weeks later because you still have a build up to that first fight. Yeah, you're yeah. still mentally preparing, you're eating, you're trying that's, to make weight. Just because right, you yeah. smashed through the last guy yeah. and it didn't look like you went through too much damage, mentally, physically, you're still going through a yeah, lot well, of Yeah, well, because you're trying to do a. a you're trying to do a training camp so that you're peaking in the fight. So if you're fighting two weeks later, you're coming off the peak, you don't quite know what to do. It sort of messes up your rhythm. So fighting every two weeks is a bit of a challenge. How good but was that feeling though? Because I was I was watching back home that night mm. when your first pro debut yeah. on Sky TV against, you know, most people start off their uh, pro debut with a bit of a pillow fight, yeah, a bit of a yeah. setup. Louis K90 was. Yeah, you I know, saw his knockout. It by was, no was great, means yeah. a, a, a padded <laughs> yeah. fight, and then you came in with a just a lightning, lightning flash knockout, yeah. <laughs> similar to your last name. I mean, yeah. was that was that a good buzz? Did it out of all your wins? Was that up there, or was there something else that's a little uh, more definitely, man? Like you know, um, I came out of the amateurs, and they're a little bit of a it's a little bit of a frantic rush, uh, the old amateur fights. But um, so coming into the pros and having a little bit more time and that. Yeah, it was, I mean, after three years coming back and starting off that way. Because I didn't know how I was going to react getting in the ring so long off, but it was a massive, awesome feeling. And one of the questions, too, is what made you, ha what made you have the jump from amateur to pro? What, what, why did you say, what, what, who, who sort of pushed you across the line, or was it you, your coach, a bit of everything to say, let's step it up or not? Um, it was probably uh, more... I had, a, I had a mate, Jay Inder, who was with me all through my amateur career, and he asked me to fight on his card. And so I started training and getting really into it this year. And, and then that, that fight sort of fell through because it was really hard to get me an opponent because of all the amateur stuff. But I just, yeah, I was just like, why did I give up? So so then I came to Peachy, Isaac Peach out west. And, yeah, and well, looking at your awesome. record, I mean, I, I don't blame guys for turning you down. And obviously, yeah. by, by yeah, the way, you yeah, stepped yeah. up tonight. You know, we were talking about you fighting tonight. You've been, you've been so busy the last two two months, um, the last two fights. Are you going to try squeeze one more in before the end of the I'm year? I'm going to try and squeeze two more. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I'm on the second of December, and then uh, where is that one? Uh, <laughs> I don't know yet actually, but it's okay. some fight card. And, yeah, here in New I don't Zealand. Really, I don't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all in New Zealand, and. Uh, yeah, hopefully on the 14th as well. But Are you able yeah. to name any opponents or talk about who nah, that may be? Nah, not really. I mean, I, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up or, or my own even because uh, <laughs> we we'll, still got to put it all together, you know. We were getting quite excited watching because we, we were saying, you know, there's Daniel Ty, there's obviously mm. Junior Far now in the States, and then yeah. Joseph Parker. What's, I know it's early stages, but where would you like to take and how, how far would you like to go with this in, in the future in terms of, um, you know, what oh, you want mate. to achieve? You know, it's, with boxing, I've always taken it a step at a time. I've never tried to bite off more than I can chew thinking about world champs before I'm New Zealand champ. So it's, it's, it's that step of, like, I have it sort of in the back of my mind. I want to go as far as I can take it on the world stage. But just getting to that world, to that national number one spot is, is what I'm looking at now. Is there anyone in the heavyweights that you had fought previously, maybe in lighter weights or heavyweight, that is, um, you know, making it in the in the world ranks, or uh, who else? Who who out there is, um, you know, was one of your hardest fights that is still fighting now? Yo, who else fighting in New Zealand? Or? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, there's there's a few guys kicking around. I mean, it's a really good weight division in New Zealand. There, the cruiser heavyweight sort of, you know, not not the heavy heavyweights, but the the sort of under 100 kilo kind of guys. Um, so there's a lot of guys kicking around. I heard Robbie Berridge is, is getting making his way oh. back into it. So, uh, he'll, he'll probably want want to get at me so yeah. now there'll, yeah, be some exciting, there. there'll be some exciting like stuff coming up man. Yeah. well that's what we said too when i saw you in there tonight because uh, how tall are you six or five eleven i'm almost six two but i'm six oh five. okay you look um gee okay you're taller than yeah. i thought <laughs> you are quite lean and, and smaller than a lot of new zealand heavyweights yeah. you know looking at junior far daniel tai himi yeah. or heel is, is sort of around the same weight as you which would be a Fantastic yeah, yeah, fight yeah, in the future. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you fought him in the amateur ranks or if he even had had an amateur um, no, he record. Didn't. No, no. Did you and Robert Berridge ever come face face? Because he was a cruiser and you were a heavyweight, you guys were totally different. Yeah, weights, well, right? I mean, I'm because I weighed in at 93.5, so uh, I, just two and a half more kilos, and I'll make the um, 
hopefully I'll make the uh, cruiserweight division. So, so I'm trying to stick around there. It's, so you know, opens up my options. But so are you saying that you would wouldn't mind sinking down to that weight or yeah, yeah, fight totally. between both? Yeah. And and if the opportunity to fight Robert Beard came up, you would you would be okay with that? Or yeah. What? Well, I mean, that guy's had experience. You know, I've had um, two four round fights, and one of them only lasted till the second round. So and he he's a 10, 12 round fighter. So. I think I'd have to build up to it, but um, I'll definitely, you know, I'm keen to take on challenges, you know, I'm not here to, to fluff around, so I like that. <laughs> and, and, hey, after seeing your performance two weeks ago and then tonight, we well, can certainly see that. I mean, um, I, I'm getting quite excited about yeah. you mentioning Robert Berridge, <laughs> and I think that's enough for the New Zealand crowd out yeah, there yeah, to, yeah. to start maybe getting a few oh, things well, in the we'll works. We'll see what he's doing. I don't know quite what he's up to, but yeah, I heard, I heard he's making a comeback, but... Yeah, you know, if we if we can make it work, then you know I'll, I'm keen to take on anyone. Oh, that's awesome to yeah. hear. And no nicknames, David. Like you've got, uh, you know, obviously a simple <laughs> name. Uh, I'm trying no, to make the great white stick without <laughs> it seeming racist. You know, it's a shark, great yeah. white, light. You know. <laughs> I like it. Hey, that's the thing. Like, I've got to put it out there. A lot of the heavyweights from New Zealand, we, uh, you know, obviously not. Um, they're of different descent, you know. Like yeah. we've got the David Tours, we've got the Junior Fars. Yeah. We haven't got a um, a white guy out there yeah. like the great white. So Maybe yeah, great white doesn't. I'd, I'd love to see yeah. it, and we and we want to see well, it. I said great white to my manager, and he said great white hope. So no, 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 no it's not the. <laughs> no, no, I think we should start throwing that. I might have to think there. of another one. And, and, and all the guys that you are fighting at the moment have obviously been from. Um, Obviously, the island, because that's, yeah. that's just where a lot of Oh man, we're like coming up through amateurs. I, I just fought, fought exclusively islanders, you know. And like, they've the like Tina Bahad. Honey. He was a hell of a tough competitor. Man. We fought recently too on the uh, yeah. Super Eight. Card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's he's tough, man. And um, yeah, no, no. Oh, what's another guy, Hemi. I don't remember his last name, but he was a Samoan champ, and he had 60 plus fights. And yeah, he gave me a real, real go for my money. And I think oh. between those two, I had about 30 fights. It was just those two guys. So, yeah. You know, I always struggle when I um, MC the South Auckland champs because I almost have to learn Tongan or Samoan. <laughs> you know, like when I see a name like yours, bro, I absolutely love it. I'm like, yes. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you having the simple name, and, yeah. and, and I want more guys out there like you. It's um, it, and that's always good. But hey, look, having that experience too, you'll you'll probably you know you'll see them out and about like Tima Honey last. Um, a couple of weeks back, and yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll have a you'll, you'll have a mutual respect for a lot of the bros and all totally. fighters out there. They, they know of you. When you when you um, were talked about making pro, everyone was talking about it because you've got that you know you're so well known in the amateur rank. So yeah, well the medal helps, <laughs> and that as well. You know, yeah. so I mean, I'm so excited to hear that one. Like you're even going to crack and like try to two, let alone yeah, one. Yeah. That's exciting and it's awesome to see because you know a lot of fighters out there maybe only have two, four a year, so yeah, for yeah. you to smash in four in the last two months of the year is, um, yeah, yeah. is, is super impressive. Yeah, well, I've been really lucky, and I've been lucky that these guys have been stepping up and not making it complicated, you know? We say, do you want to fight? They say, yeah, and then the fight's on, you know? A lot of guys don't do that. They, they play games, and there's not enough money, and then there's complications, but, you know, and I think it's just, I'm lucky at my weight that there are a lot of guys around who can who are there to fill in those shoes, you know? I think mate, you're you're hungry to go. Yeah, you're, you're totally. keen to make it happen, and things are, are, are just sort of starting in flow for yeah. you. So it's, it's really good to see that. You know, like I said, I, you, you couldn't have had a better start. Yeah, a couple yeah, weeks yeah. Back yeah. And then tonight, oh, totally. uh, yeah. And if I get two more before the end of the year, that would just be crazy. And you know, I mean, it's unheard of starting in November and having four before the end of the year. Mate, so, some people have uh, you know one in, in, the, in the later part of the year. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I just don't want to do it like that because you know you're, you're drifting off, you're forgetting about it. You know, I want to. Oh, but it's drink. a little bit. It's reminding me of the amateurs. You know, where you're, where you're fighting every two weeks, having 20 fights in one year, and <laughs> constantly <laughs> struggling to make weight. Yeah, no, that sounds tough. At least, um, well, hopefully, it wasn't too hard to make weight. If you do do, do that jump down there, you probably yeah. will have to watch a little bit more what you eat eh, over the Christmas Yeah, but period. I mean, you know, the, the 24 hour you would weigh in, it's just such, so good, man. You know, making weight and fighting on the day, I mean, that that was hard, doing that as an amateur. But, you know, I got, I got more than 24 hours most of the time now, so it's, it's, it's sweet as. So tonight, you can kick back, obviously have a coldie. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm eat what you want. <laughs> and then, you know, probably back to it soon though, right? Like, yeah, um, mate, training Monday. I'm fighting in two weeks. <laughs> oh, 
as well. Yeah. For those watching back home, um, you know, you're obviously on your Facebook, you're on Insta. Yep. Uh, anything else that people should follow or go to to get behind you and support what, what you're doing here in New Zealand? Oh man, I'm probably into that. <laughs> Don't ask me about politics, man. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I'll be here another four hours. It's been no, gone. It's, um, yeah, I just I'm on Facebook, you know, I'll add anyone, but I think I need to get on to, you know, creating those fan pages sort of thing. And, and, yeah. Well, you know, a bit more talk about, maybe a bit more hype. I don't yeah. know if, yeah, we've already started the Robert Beard thing tonight, so <laughs> yeah. that's always Probably shouldn't good. have mentioned that. I'm a, they call me Loose Lips Dave. <laughs> maybe that should be my ring name. That should be the ring name. <laughs> we've got two out there now. Uh, we'll certainly follow that. Yeah. We're certainly looking forward to seeing more fights. It's been an honor. Cheers. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.